Hi, and welcome back to David Pattinson's Accused Friends. Today I want to talk about how Britain will be different after the lockdown. And the first thing to sort of um, anticipate is that the, the lockdown won't officially end, it, it'll just gradually end. There won't be a sort of announcement that is over, go back to normal. People will just start going back to normal and as a society we'll just sort of move on from the lockdown and from um, the unlawful mass house arrest of the population. The government won't be um, admitting to any unlawful conduct and they won't be really focusing or emphasising or discussing the benefits of the lockdown. They won't be talking about how many lives were saved. Um, it'll just continue to be promoting the, the fear caused, um, which resulted in the lockdown and, um, you know, promoting a constant fear and uh, surveillance state and um, a growth of tyranny and a reduction of personal liberty. And so I want to use this video to anticipate some of the changes. Where I want to start is the, um, the civil liberty of, of the prevention of unlawful searches and seizures. And we think about this with, with our personal property. The police are not able to come and search your property without a warrant. But what will happen after the lockdown is that the government will surveil everyone through their mobile phone and they'll uh, spy and track and trace people through their mobile phone who they're interacting with and um, how many people they're interacting with and the types of people they're interacting with and uh, there'll just be a permanent uh, constant surveillance, uh, warrantless wiretapping of people's interactions and if you interact with too many people you can expect a, a warning from the government or a threat from the government that you, you need to sort of stop doing that or, or whatever it is and um, you know totally uh, violating um, citizens' um, individual rights and liberties, but uh, you know it's not going to stop the government from doing it. On the seizure front, I think there's going to be a focus uh, or an attempt to in um, put together these uh, capital levies on people's assets, savings accounts, uh, properties uh, that are part of their assets. The government will attempt to seize. Um, assets and wealth from people to, to pay back all the debt that's been accumulated through the lockdown with the crashing of the economy, uh, through all the bailouts and that sort of stuff. Uh, it'll be challenged in court, but I think there'll be an attempt from the government to do it. Um, next point I've got is obviously freedom of speech and dissent. There's not going to be any appreciation or acceptance of dissent uh, against the government for the lockdown and for the crashing of the economy. Uh, there's not going to be any patience for that. Uh, the media over the last couple of decades, uh, especially in recent years particularly, has become a vehicle for government propaganda. It is not a, a vehicle for protecting the rights of citizens from authoritarian power. The, the media has become uh, a vehicle to shape opinion rather than reflect opinion and you can expect a lot more gov um, government propaganda through the the corporate media on how um, you know a great the lockdown's been and how important it was and and anyone that says otherwise it is not going to be given any airtime you know there's been a big growth in citizen journalism through online channels like this one that, that i'm speaking to you on but um there's been a noticeable crackdown with through the um the coronavirus um, throttling of, of people's um, personal messages and um, censorship of, of people that, that don't toe the party line on how important the lockdown is and how necessary authoritarian governments are through this crisis. And anyone who says the crisis is overblown is going to be um, finding that they're not permitted to have uh, the right to, to freedom of speech. So look out for more of that. Uh, due process, I think, is going to be heavily um, watered down through this crisis. There's firstly going to be um, some lawsuits from uh, private citizens who have lost their business and they're going to want to hold the government accountable for doing it, for um, interfering with their you know, freedom of, of uh, being able to do business with other people. The government's going to want uh, an indemnity on all these sorts of lawsuits. They don't want to be liable for, for paying out compensation to people who have lost their livelihoods. And I suspect the courts will side with the government. Um, you know, the, the courts sometimes do this in the 
um, name of, um, you know, societal unity and societal cohesion. And, uh, you know, I would anticipate that coming. Um, also, there's a presumption of guilt on the part of, of all British citizens that you are um, unwell or you are likely to transmit a virus if you go out and about with your lives. That's why there's people saying that you've got to wear a face mask and all this sort of stuff. And uh, there's not going to be any presumption of innocence. There's not going to be any presumption that if you go out of your house right now, you might be perfectly healthy and the government needs to prove that you're unwell. It's just going to be presumed that you're unwell and uh, there's not going to be any time or, or um, appetite for, for your right to defend yourself in court. So you forget about all that. I suspect that we might look back on the Alison Saunders era of, of guilt pre-trial as kind of a golden age of of due process. Um, I hope that's not the case, but but I think it could well be. Freedom of movement is the next point I have. There's obviously going to be restrictions on uh, your ability to move around the country, interact with who you want to interact with, and uh, you know curbs on movement are going to be um, curtailed through the surveillance of you and your movements. I mean, it's happening right now, but I think it'll happen going forward. If you've gone to work and gone home at the end of the three in one day, that's probably enough for you. And if you want to go out and socialize with your friends after having so sort of interacted with your work colleagues, that's probably going to be a step too far. Uh, business cost and regulation is going to increase dramatically. I mean, there's a lot of businesses that have uh, leased big office spaces on the anticipation they could fit 50 employees or 100 employees in them. Now they're going to find they can only fit 10 people in them because of social distancing. So they're paying a huge um, real estate business cost for their office space, but they cannot fill it as they anticipated they'd be able to do when they signed the contract. So a lot of businesses will go under because of the excess cost. There'll be a huge increase in obviously prices for customers because the, the costs on business and there'll be a lot more regulations. I was reading about airports. It's going to be like four hours of queuing to get on a plane. It will be queuing to get into your um, local shop. It will be queuing to get wherever you want to go. And so people just won't bother. The, the convenience element and the ease of doing business will be taken away and uh, everything will be a, a big, big challenge. And so people will just say, well, look, let's just, uh, you know, shop from Amazon, uh, give them all our money rather than uh, support our, our local industry. Uh, next point I've got is cash. There's a big going to be a big play from the government to, to rid us of cash, with the argument being cash might contain, um, you know, a virus on the cash, so it's dangerous. But of course, they won't say that the credit cards have can, might contain a virus on them. That that won't be talked about because it's in the government interest to control all the money and, and the big banks to control all the money. And if citizens are holding paper cash and trading paper cash with each other, it's much more difficult for the government to, to monitor what's going on. So I can see a big reduction in cash, maybe even a complete elimination of it and digital currency that, that can be controlled and, and dished out, um, you know, with the permission of the government will be the norm. Uh, healthcare. There's not going to be any debate or discussion about whether the NHS is the right healthcare program for our, for our country. There's not going to be any appetite for suggestions of competition for the NHS. It's going to be the NHS is great, full stop. No one's going to be able to argue with that or debate that or have, you know, have any kind of discussion about it. And the NHS is going to expand more and become an even bigger tool, a uh, bigger stick for the, the government to beat people with and say, look, you know, you vote for us or you lose your health care. You know, we're not going to give you permission to have uh, health savings accounts or health insurance or, you know, private medicine because, um, you know, we're controlling your full health care now and uh, your liberty to control your own health care is totally banned. There's going to be compulsory uh, vaccinations and inoculations, compulsory drugs and medicine to make sure you're healthy. Uh, there's not going to be any sense that, that you might be healthy now or that any government-approved vaccinations might make you less healthy than you are now. 
Uh, rich poor divide is going to grow. There's, we're going to turn into a country a bit like South America, um, South American countries where you have a, a ruling elite at the top, very, very wealthy, and then you have all the plebs underneath. Uh, there's going to be a huge reduction in the middle class for, for a few reasons. One is taxation, huge taxation on working people, so they won't bother or they work less. Um, a lot of businesses, uh, business um, managers and entrepreneurial people that have formed their business uh, have lost their business, so they're going back into the um, the poverty part of the country. They're not being aspiring to become wealthy people anymore, and they're not just going to pick up straight back after the lockdown and, and pick up where they left off. Their business is gone. Their appetite for starting a new business has, has decreased significantly, and um, you're going to get this this rich poor divide, and um, you know the, a big strengthening of government power over over the citizenry. Um, Final negative point I've got here is just overall confidence. Bis consumer confidence is going to drop significantly. Business formation confidence is going to drop significantly. Um, and so, you know, I think there'll be an expansion of government programs to fill the void that the private sector is not willing to to um, step up and produce and also uh, lenders they're not going to want to lend money to people and without big um, you know capital uh, investments for, from the business leaders and uh, so there's going to be very little businesses being uh, formed government will come in to, to fill the void and uh, you know an expansion of government authority even more than it is now and uh, you know people just have less and less confidence in um, public services and private services and, and any kind of services that I would imagine um, I will end though with a with a couple of positives um, I'm actually a pretty positive person uh, although the events of the last few weeks uh, have challenged even my positive outlook on life. I think as far as feminism goes, um, there'll be overall a sort of a weakening of feminism, but there'll still be a lot of women that, that are going to be even more married to government than they are now. Um, we sort of think of fe feminism up to this point as being what I would call fashionable feminism, whereas independent women working, but they've got the government there as a backup. Now those women won't be working, but they will just be married to, to the government and collect a welfare check from them. But I think a lot of women will decide that, yeah, they need to find a husband um, you know, as soon as possible and, and will seek to get married. And this will be good for strengthening the nuclear family and strengthening local communities, uh, which I'm a big advocate of. And, um, you know, but um, so overall, there will be a, a sort of weakening of feminism and especially the, the feminist grip of the legal system where, you know, you have to support women in any he said, he said, she said case and men are given far more strict punishments for, for the same offence that women are. Um, final point is immigration. There's inevitably going to be a reduction in, in immigration into the country. You can't have uh, the government can't say with any kind of straight face that, that you, the British citizen, might transmit an illness to someone else, but an unvetted immigrant into our country will not. So there's going to be a reduction in, in immigration. I don't think this will translate to any benefits for, for British Labour because uh, the, the economic growth is so damaged and the economy is so damaged. But what it will do is help um, the British cultural identity will be diluted uh, much less uh, because you know we're not getting the the rich cultural diversity being imported into our country to suppress labor costs and prop up the ruling class um, you know we're able to to have our own cultural identity being um, supreme because um, you know there's there's no immigrants coming in to, to dilute it so that's my, uh, that's my video today. Obviously, the society will change a lot, and uh, I've, I've laid out a, a lot of uh, predictions here. And uh, please subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content, and comment below with any of your ideas as well. So thanks very much for watching.